What's going on, everybody? Welcome into a Saturday weekly edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat stand up here on this gorgeous July 27, 2024. Appreciate everybody who stuck with us. This is our weekly recap episode. So we just review all of the great stories. Awesome. Awesome week. A lot of crazy stuff. Stu had a solo show on Wednesday. I did a solo show on Thursday. So we'll get a mix of everything there. Crazy week. As always, guys, we appreciate you checking us out. We're going to go ahead and kick this off to the team. But as always, guys, check us out, www.energynewsbeat.com. Hit the description below. Sign up for our sub stack. We will I'll be back in the chair on Monday to deliver the news, guys. Have a great weekend. Ford Scraps plans for $1.8 billion in Oakville EV assembly plant. It will retool and make gasoline pickups. Motor Ford Motor announced it's pivoting away from its initial production plans to build electric vehicles at Oakville in Ontario. Michael, this is critical because Ontario invested in subsidies to Ford for electric car jobs to the tune of, I believe it was 377,000 per job that they invested in. And now they're doing a bait and switch on this. This is huge. Well, it is. And I think, you know, something that, that you're, you know, we've touched on this numerous times, but the EVs are falling out of favor with, you know, not just here in the United States, but around the world. I mean, again, this is in Canada. If, if, and now, obviously, Ford, it's an American company, so there's 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 kind of the competing interest there. But on the on the side of on the side of whether or not EVs are going to become a thing, we've been saying this now for years. If you're either going to, you know, why will Tesla win? Probably not because of the electric nature of their car, but probably because of their full self-driving and the fact that they actually make a superior car. That's the difference. Tesla is is a new way to design a car from the software and the way it looks and the ways it feels. The EV part of Tesla isn't that novel and probably, in my opinion, is not the reason Tesla is going to win this quote unquote, new market or why it's valued so much higher than all these others. We know that a lot of what EV is being valued around is this robo taxi idea with it's been pushed out a little bit till the end of August. So right. I think a lot of this, I think all of these companies, Ford, you know, Stellantis, all these companies, obviously they wanted in on the EV tax credits, but I think they miscalculated why Tesla was so successful and why they were getting a huge bump and why Tesla, in my opinion, will be successful is for things and other than the fact that their vehicles happen to be electric. I wouldn't be shocked if they came out with a hydrogen car at some point. Oh, I, I wouldn't either. I, I wouldn't buy it. The Hindenburg is nothing to be driving around. Uh, I, but... I don't want to drive around a nuclear bomb. No. Why is wind power useless? According to the Sierra Club, wind power electricity is economically viable without government assistance. Wow. I think that they're going to have a job. Whoever this is, is IR guy of the week, or we need to put them in to the Biden administration or the next one's press secretary. What do you think? <laughs> the government subsidizes wind power. Some of the subsidies are up front. Others are hidden tax rules created by the law to change the bargaining balance between providers of electric, electric utilities. The biggest hidden subsidy is taxed equity financing, a masterpiece of accounting obscurism. Yeah. So this falls on the heels, Michael, of a big, the big one up in the vineyard, a wind farm just totally blew up and it sent all of the blades up on the beach and the microplastics and the plastics yep. were just horrific. And the death and distraction, where are the ecological warriors out there when this kind of stuff happens? Well, it 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 puts them in a, in a mind twist because on one hand, yes, they you know wind they were shoving wind down our throats is the next greatest thing until you realize the the horrendous nature of what happens when things goes goes wrong. So right. it's like everything. There are there are upsides and downsides. People have been saying, well, what happened? What what about the Macondo spill? Yeah, okay, yes. Well, obviously, you, we don't want oil spills. The difference is the amount of power we can get out of one oil well is tremendously more than we can get out of one 
windmill. So the question is, exactly. what risk would you rather associate with? I think that's the part that people don't realize. There's risk with everything you do. There's risk when you walk outside and jaywalk across the street. But guess what? You do it anyway because you've evaluated the risk relative to doing anything else. So this idea that we have zero risk in anything we do, I think is stupid. But the fact that the the minimal, minuscule amount of increase of 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 energy that we get from a wind farm relative to the risk of you know you know as much as i hate the whales the the whales all the all the the the, the seafood and you know I, I think of it in terms of seafood not sea life because i'm all about trying to eat the stuff but you know all of the the ecosystem that surrounds these right. areas and the fact that they're just horrible to look at that 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 outweighs in my opinion the minuscule increase of quote unquote energy we Listen get from to these the wind numbers parts. michael they break it out very well a 1 billion dollar wind farm would have a nameplate capacity of 400 megawatts the nameplate capacity is the maximum output when there's sufficient wind but since wind isn't always blowing, the average power would be typically 38% of the 400 megawatts or 152 megawatts. This accounts for 1,337,000 megawatt hours per year. To meet the 12% interest rate goal, the electricity would have to sell for the high price of $115 per megawatt hour to meet an 8% goal. The case of a guaranteed long-term contract, the company would need about $75 per megawatt hour. Michael, to compare against the natural gas, they're twenty dollars per megawatt yep. hour. That is the significant difference, and that's even with subsidies. Yeah, legit subsidies, not tax incentives, not tax incentives, legitimate subsidies. Right, exactly. So the this article breaks it out pretty good. And for ninety five megawatt per hour, the U.S. is wasting about forty one billion dollars every year on subsidies for wind power, which is around. $300 per household annually. Yeah, crazy. UK likely to miss its 2030 clean power goals. Really? I can't believe this. I am so I'm so shocked. As part of its ever efforts to boost clean energy, the UK government lifted the de facto ban on onshore wind, which has been in place in England since 2015. The government has committed to doubling its onshore wind energy by 2030, quadrupling offshore wind and tripling tripling solar power by the end of the decade. Michael, they're going to go broke. They are, their whole new government is is brand new and they are absolutely just going to break the UK. Yeah, I mean it's this is pretty uh you, you got is, this financial times analysis. This just cracked me up. Well, it's you got this uh, this is the most English company you'll ever heard of who did this analysis, Cornwall Insight. It's about as English as it gets. It's like a really horrible meal. I mean, it, it's really bland. Here's the, here's the quote from Kate Mulvaney. She's a principal consultant over there at Cornwall Insight. She says that labor, quote, faces significant challenges in reaching their 2030 power decarbonization targets as financial constraints, supply chain challenges, and intense global competition for limited resources po pose Hurdles. I mean, there's a three prong approach there. You 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 got to have the money to be able to do this. It's huge right. investments. You got to be able to get these these raw materials. A lot of them are coming from Africa. We know what's going on over there in terms of child labor, in terms of unsafe working environments, and you know, with the amount of subsidies which have gone into this over the years. The massive entrants have flooded the market, and it's almost become a dime a dozen to have your own renewables company because why not? You're going to get a nice big government check for that. You know, right. the, the UK Climate Change Committee said, did say last week that its latest assessment showed that the U or did say that the US, the latest assessment showed that the UK is off track for net zero only as a third as only a third of the emissions reductions required to achieve the country's 2030 target are currently covered by credible plans. So even the climate change committee over there says they're not going to work. That's bad. When the climate change police are mattress, you know, confronting the mattress police, mattress tag police, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. The only thing I saw is we officially got some 
notes out from SM Energy. They announced a private upsize debt offering of about $1.5 billion, half of that due in 2029, the other half due in 2032. And this was to fund the SCL Resources Acquisition, which is a joint venture there from NCAP and Rice Energy partners you went to basin which is actually really interesting there's there's two notes here you know you got 6.7 percent senior notes half of that due in 2029 the other half in 2032 is at seven percent so you know i mean that gives you an idea on how much debt debt's costed nowadays uh, and, there, and there's definitely a, a little bit of a uh, seven trillion a year or something like that seven trillion a year it's not that expensive but you're definitely oh, you're at yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Stanley Nichols. That's what that's what it is in Stanley Nichols. But this is again assuming the XCL resources close. This has what they call a special mandatory redemption, which means if they don't actually close this acquisition, the bank can go ahead and redeem all this back. You know, I'm generally not a big fan of using debt to go out and make acquisitions, especially when those acquisitions, especially when you got to go spend a lot of capital to actually develop these assets. But I want to throw up this chart here. This is from Ted Cross. He's over there at Novi Labs. We love them over there. It, basically what this chart is showing, XL Energy, this is back when they bought their Uinta, those XCL Uinta assets. But what this showing is that the Uinta Wells, the average Uinta Well, is outperforming both the Delaware, the Williston, and Midland Basin. The, basically, the, the Uinta is slowly becoming and sneakily becoming one of the top plays in the United States. And nice. that's crazy to think about, especially because there's only 283 wells drilled there. So the downside is the sample size is probably maybe smaller than you want. You know, Delaware, as you see down there, has got 11,000 wells drilled. Midland Basin's got 10,000 wells. You got pins only at, you know, 3,600 wells. But you see the average EUR is substantially higher than the Midland Basin, a lot better than the Williston. And slightly better than the Delaware. And right now, all the rage is focused on the Delaware Basin. Big wells are being drilled down there. Right. Pretty interesting. So, you know, knowing this, I don't feel as bad taking debt out to go acquire a company. Obviously, SM's going to, you know, S, you got to fund your acquisition some way. We don't have cash on hand. But, you know, as as I, I'm not as worried, per se, about SM Energy doing this because I, I think they're actually going to see the returns relative to to you know this acreage the key the good thing about xcl is they have some of the best acreage out there in uinta so there is a lot of running room in this deal I, i'm it's pretty fascinating Stu. i again i you know call me crazy i don't actually mind taking out all this debt to fund this because i do think they'll be able to make the money back oh yeah uh, from the way you described it but again, the only way to know is drill wells, and we love that. So we'll we'll definitely be seeing some development there. UK mandates green jet fuel by 2025. David Blackman, Irina Slav, and Tammy Nemeth and I have been talking about the UK in the left leaning left wing government that has now been put in is the UK government has announced the introduction of sustainable aviation fuel SAF mandate set to begin on January 21st, 2025, pending parliamentary approval. The percentage will increase to 10% by 2030 and 2020 and 22 percent by 2040 meaning this level until further supply uh, certainty is achieved here's where this is a huge mistake jet engines are not like car engines and by the way ethanol is one of the biggest mistakes that the u.s government has ever done it takes more energy to create sustainable or green jet fuel than it does to actually burn aviation fuel. So this is absolutely nuts. They say in the article, it's expected to deliver emission reductions of up to 2.7 MTCO2E by 2030 and up to 6.3 MTCO2E by 2040. I disagree because that's not taking into consideration the actual methane and other emissions that it takes in order to make it. So this is a hundred percent play to their base in their electoral base that this is a brand new thing they're trying to do. 
And all it does is waste energy, cost people. It will be harder on the engines, and that does not work. U.S. Democrats to launch a bill holding oil and gas firms accountable for any work with OPEC. This is super interesting here. I'm going to read straight from the article. Democratic U.S. lawmakers on Wednesday introduced a bill to hold energy companies accountable if they are found by federal regulators to have colluded with, the, with OPEC to raise oil prices. The bill, which was introduced by Senator Ed Malarkey and Representative Nanette Bargain, again, sorry if I butcher the name, says if any energy company is found by the FTC to have colluded with OPEC, it would no longer be eligible for new oil and gas leases on federal lands and water. There's a quote in here that Malarkey, he said in a statement that this bill is the first step towards ensuring big oil gets big consequences when they profiteer off the back of hard working Americans. Of course, there's some other co-sponsors, including our favorite Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Raul, and, and, and Raul Grava. This comes off the heels of the U.S. Senate Budget Committee launching a probe last month into basically all domestic oil producers to see if they've been colluding with OPEC. The American Petroleum Institute came out and said this was a, quote, election year stunt, which is probably true. It's also important to note that this is not really going to pass. We've got U.S. House. The U.S. House of Representatives is controlled by the Republicans, so it's very unlikely that this would pass the House if it did ever make it to the president's desk. He would most likely sign it. So obviously that's it. This all, again all comes off the heels of the FTC accusing Scott Sheffield, who at the time was the CEO of Pioneer Natural Resources, of colluding with OPEC in order to artificially inflate oil prices. They went ahead and let that merger go through, but barred him from being on Exxon's board, which is app, which is pretty unbelievable. You know, Exxon ended up submitting about 1.1 million documents and other information as part of that probe to the FTC. And they said that they raised no concern with his business practices. So, I mean, again, it's all just a political stunt. What I find interesting here is, again, this is all just hand-waving. This is to say, hey, we're standing up to big oil. You know, if you look at the cover image, of course, you got Elizabeth Warren standing behind. Again, there's there's very little substance to this in terms of the, the FTC doesn't necessarily have the same rule book. There's no defining what collusion is, is a little bit subjective. And that's part of what the FTC is. The FTC doesn't have a rule book to say what's collusion and what's not. It's a little bit like, well, there's a, you know, it, it looks like collusion. They're texting. And what does texting mean? I, you know, we, we all text a lot of people. If I was liable for everything I ever said in a text, holy smokes, we'd all be done. So the fact that, you know, they got Scott Sheffield for app for texting somebody or, or, communicating with people in OPEC. It's like, well, duh, he's in the oil and gas business. And, you know, the, the funny part is, I think what they don't understand is that OPEC doesn't care about U.S. shale. And they don't actually like it. Remember back in 2014 when they turned on the taps and tanked U.S. shale? I mean, it's the same OPEC. They haven't changed. They, there's no incentive for them to work with the United States. It's two different glo it's two different over it's two different markets, really. I mean, you've got Brent and WTI. Yes, there's some, there's definitely a correlation there, but I, I think the part that these the these these you know this this US Congress people are missing is the fact that they think OPEC will do what US shale wants. No, no they won't. Trust me. They may say it up front in order to you know, for whatever reason, but they're going to do what's in their best interest. And they're already holding back production. So what do you, what, what's more to do? Hey, we need you to, you know, hold back more oil production. I mean, no, that's, that's definitely not. I mean, again, I think what's also all getting lost in, in the tap here is that if President Trump, former President Trump wins, which is looking highly likely that he will, that's going to do more, in my opinion, damage, quote unquote, to the to oil price than any quote unquote collusion that's going to happen. So what's funny is if Ed Malarkey wants oil prices to go down, probably should elect Trump, but you can't tell him that because that's, you know, threat to democracy, all that. We're just going to get mad if someone gets caught emailing anybody associated with OPEC. Pretty unbelievable.